Hello, and welcome to the first video tutorial of Gearify. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create gears using simple images. This is a very powerful technique because uh, it allows you to create gears using basically any image editing software that you like, like MS Paint or uh, Photoshop or Paint.net, and you can create gears using them. So let's get started. So the main thing that you need to have is an image that has a nice solid background. So to begin, we click on the Image tab here under the Base Curve section, and we click the Image button to upload a picture. You can upload pretty much every standard uh, image file type, bump, JPEG, TIFF, GIF, uh, most of the standard formats are recognized. So I'm going to use this picture. This has been something I've used a lot during developments to test. So the important feature of this picture is that the background is a nice solid color that is distinctly different from the content of the picture. If the background were, say, a yellow color, close to yellow, then that, that might be a problem. So now that we've uploaded our image, all you need to do is click Read Image, and it traces around uh, the perimeter of the image, and once it's done, it calculates a gear shape. Now, from here, a very useful feature is to use an offset. Uh, I like to use an usually negative 1 or 2 percent to offset the gear slightly inside the image. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to click on Create Gear over here at the top. I'm sorry, Calculate Gear at the top, and then Create Gear, the button here. And within a matter of seconds, we'll have a nice gear. And as you can see, it puts the original texture back in place. So you get a nice, uh, amusing gear picture. So, all right, so that was fun. But let me show you some of the options and some of the meaning of all these, uh, all these design parameters that you have here. Okay, so first there's the pan zoom option, and that's so that, you know, uh, you can return to the normal zoom controls. The normal zoom controls are you double click to zoom in, right click to zoom out, and just drag to pan around. But in this mode, you'll have to have the pan zoom option checked uh, for you to have these controls. Okay, so the other options here are, first of all, the center of the gear is at the center of the crosshairs here. So if you wanted to change the center to be, say, at the middle of his eye right here, you have to click there. Oops, I have to disable pan zoom. You click here, and now you have to recalculate. So you'd re you click read image once more. Trace around the edge, and then we do an offset again. And now we've got another gear with the and then the center has been shifted to the center of the eye. So that's useful. Um, and that's mostly everything we need. Uh, you can manually set the center of the gear using the X and Y coordinates here, uh, where you would enter in pixel coordinates. Uh, the location of the center of where you where you want the center of the gear to be. So I could change this to I don't know, maybe one ten. You know, just shift it around manually if you care to. Uh, so the other option that I have not talked about, the way the only important one left is the tolerance. Uh, let me upload a new image to get you an uh, understanding of what the tolerance means. All right, so depending on your monitor uh, and your display settings, you may not be able to see perfectly what this image has. It has a black center, a nice black circle, uh, a medium gray circle surrounding it, and a slightly off-white gray circle around that and then the background is pure white. So if I were to just click read image here, 
So what it's doing is it's recognizing the medium gray perimeter as being the edge of the gear. However, suppose I wanted to ignore the gray parts and just not read anything except for the black. For this to happen, I would increase the tolerance. That means that the image can deviate even further from the background color, which is white, before it actually reads something. So if I have it set at 0 0.5, I can click Read Image, and now it's reading only the black perimeter. If, on the other hand, I wanted to be much more sensitive to deviations from the background color, and I wanted to grab the outermost circle, this slightly off-white circle, I would have to use a lower tolerance. So I'm going to set the tolerance to 0.1 and read the image. And you can see that now we're getting the off-white circle. So this is useful because depending on what images you're using, uh, you may want to you know, be more or less sensitive to uh, when slight deviations, color deviations from the background are picked up. Um, and that's basically all you need to know. Just to review, all you really do is you click image, upload a picture, click read image. You can offset it if you need to, and then just go to Calculate Gear. One final comment. As it reads the perimeter of the gear during this step, it is using 360 sample points. That is, it is sampling the edge of every, well, it's dividing the entire revolution, the entire image, into 360 segments. So that's basically one degree per segment. If you want to use fewer sample points, you can use this little slider here, and this will use fewer samples of the image. This means that when you read it, it'll read it faster, but it'll be slightly less accurate, as you can see here. Go back to pan zoom. The measurements are taken farther apart. So it skipped over this little corner here. It jumps sort of from there to there. If I go back to a higher, higher number of sample points, I'll read it once more. It's going around. You see it got closer to the inside that time. Sometimes you may want to adjust this depending on what image you're using. Uh, sometimes 360 degrees can be too much. But anyway, that's about it. Oh, one, little, one more little useful comment. You can always press Z after clicking on the display area to do a zoom extents and get everything in view. Useful when you've been uh, dragging and zooming around and you just want to reset your view. So we just calculate our gear and then we're happy. Uh, oh, and one thing I should mention is that once you're here, let me just offset that quickly clean that up. That looks better. Once you're here, you are free to use any of the standard textures that are available here. You can use a solid color, uh, and you can upload your own texture. Let me just try the same image on the other gear. It's not going to look great, but you get the idea. So after, after you, as I did, just click Browse here and uploaded a texture, you can click adjust and here you have uh, some control options for how you want to manipulate the texture you can move the texture around which is the default option you can rotate it click rotate here and just drag on the screen to rotate things around uh, and you can scale it you just click the scale button and drag around to change the size of the image so let me just get this into position. I think it needs to be a little bigger. It's not going to look great because the shape doesn't really fit the image, but you get the idea. And now I'm just going to click Done Adjusting. And that doesn't look too bad, actually. 
So there you go. Now you can go and use pretty much any image you want, any crazy thing that you can think of, you can uh, turn it into a gear. As a final comment, uh, some images obviously do not possess the nice, clear, solid background that are needed for this sort of thing. Uh, and in the next tutorial, I'll show you how you can create gears from these images uh, using the free draw option. Basically what you'll do is you'll upload a picture as the background and you can trace over it and just draw your own gear that's shaped like the image. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you'll uh, stay tuned for uh, some more tutorials. Thank you.